we are moving on to some very exciting seventh chords. These are the uncommon diatonic seventh chords. 5-7, you'll find that a lot. 2-7, pretty frequently as well. 7-7, seven, seven, those will all are relatively frequent. However, the four chord, the six chord, the one chord, and the three chord as seventh chords are fairly uncommon. But sometimes that's what makes them so, their uniqueness makes them really interesting. So where you find them is most often in the circle of fifths sequence. We're going to talk about that towards the end. But let's start with each one individually. The subdominant seventh chord, in other words, the seventh chord built upon scale degree seven. In a major key, its sonority is a major triad with a major seven. And you would indicate it with this Roman numeral, uppercase Roman numeral four, capital M, seven. In a minor key, it is a minor seven, so a minor triad with a minor seven. Those are the sonorities that you're dealing with. In the case of the subdominant seventh chord, inversions are uncommon. You do have an exception. That is four, six, five, five, six, one. Let me show what that would look like. Let's take the key of, let's say, E minor, and I'll just use a treble clef. Say E minor, and we say four, six, five. So here, four is major, major triad, with a minor seventh. We're in a minor key. It's, it's not what we expect. Instead, you would have in the bass, C sharp, and the chord would be A, C sharp, E, G, C sharp in the bass. And where is this coming from? It, we say, well, it goes to, to the D sharp, 5-6 chord, and then it would finally resolve to our 1 chord. Why do we have this exception? This goes back to the whole idea of melodic minor. And when you have an ascending bass line, C sharp, D sharp, E, you have to raise scale degree 6. Because you do not want to have C natural jump an augmented second to D sharp. So to support that melodic bass line, you change the sonority, the typical sonority of the subdominant seventh chord. Instead of making it a minor seven, you make it a major minor seven. But of great importance is to realize that this major minor seven is not functioning as a dominant chord. Our five seven chord that we've talked about so much is also a major minor seven. But when it functions like five seven, it's functioning like a dominant chord. So here, four six five is not functioning like a dominant chord. It's functioning as a four chord that is then moving up like a scale in the bass. That's something when you look at an analysis. So keep in mind right now we're I'm telling you what it is up front, and saying here's how you would write it. But at a certain point, you're going to look at a piece of music, and you're going to say, well, what's going on here? And you might look and see, in the key of A minor, an A7 chord. And you might think, huh, have we modulated? Are we now in the key of maybe D major or, or D minor? What's, what's going on? And what... What I want you to do to help you with that analysis is remember that this bass line is often changing the sonority of the four chord in, in minor, from having a minor third to a major third. So this, if you remember these things, this will really help you when you try to understand the music of the greats. Let's move forward. Let's talk about the submedian seventh chord. Here we're talking about chords built on scale degree 6. That means that in a major key, it is a minor minor 7 in terms of sonority, and that in a minor key, it is a major major 7 sonority. These chords resolve just as the triads would 
and as expected. So a six chord typically will go to four or two. So here in our major key, major four or minor two. In our minor key, minor four or diminished two. That's how we would expect the resolution. But let's talk about yet another exception. In this case, we start on a five chord. We then go to sharp six, half diminished seven. That's a mouthful. What are, what are we talking about here? Well, let's, let's talk specifics. We don't want to have any floating abstractions and crazy ideas that we don't understand what they really mean. We're in the key of E minor. So, what is sharp six? What does that mean? Well, normally six in the key of E minor is a C. That's our normal six. So normally, we would expect C, E, G, B. That's what we would normally expect as our six major seven chord in a minor key. But I'm asking for sharp six, so take that C and put a sharp in front of it. Now my chord is C sharp E G B, which makes it go from a half up uh, from a, a major seven sonority to a half diminished sonority. Why would we do this? For the same reason we made that a C sharp when we talked about our taking our four chord and making it major instead of minor. It's so that we can have a bass line that starts on a five chord, which would be a B then C sharp, and then I'd say 7 in root position, and then finally getting to an E minor triad, which would be a 1 chord. So again, this is sharp 6, half diminished 7. And that's how you indicate it. When, you have, when you're changing the bass note, the root of the chord, I'm sorry, not the bass note, the root of the chord to something outside of what is expected in that key, you then provide an accidental in front of it. So since you expect the six chord to be the lowered scale degree six, not the raised scale degree six, when you change it to the raised, you have to indicate that in the Roman numeral analysis. Here we have a root position seven diminished triad. Here's another exception that we haven't talked about yet. We've always said that seven diminished triads should be in first inversion. The reason? Because the diminished interval, the diminished fifth interval is so dissonant that it's a little bit grating for the human ear. So we put it in first inversion, it lessens that dissonance. Why? What, what principle, what law of human perception and music allows for you to not have that issue here? Well, it's the power of the scale. B, C sharp, D sharp, E. And the fact that the, the five chord here, and the reason I put a, a big s square around it is that this is the main chord going to this. And these chords here are just passing. We're just passing through. And we're using the power of the scale to do that. We're connecting five and one with the power of the scale. And you can you can make a lot of exceptions when you have that scale motion, whether that scale is going up or down. In the case of minor, so la ti do is a very powerful melodic motion that allows chords to be shifted and exceptions to be made. So in this case, it's not really functioning like a six chord. It's not functioning like a subdominant chord. And I've said this a couple times. When it, what does it mean to function like a chord? What that means is it has the normal gravitational pull to the chord that's going to come next. It gravitates naturally. So a dominant chord has the gravitational pull of a ton the tonic, pulls the five chord into it. And a submediate chord gets pulled into either four or two. So when we say something doesn't function, like what we're calling it, it means there's some other kind of gravitational pull. In this case, the power of the scale. So we, we call it a six chord just because we have to get the letters right. We have to name what the letters are in that chord. But it's not functioning. It's functioning as a passing chord in this circumstance. All right, tonic seventh chords. 
For a tonic seventh chord, we're talking about built on scale degree one. In a major key, that means it is a major, major seven chord. And in a minor key, it is a minor seven, normally. Here, in a minor key, you do not normally raise the leading tone. For a, a one tonic, tonic seventh chord, you don't. The exception is in jazz. In jazz, you will hear that. So let me play you the difference. So if we are in a minor key, your normal minor, minor seven would be. So that's a minor triad with a minor seven. Here's a minor triad with a major seven, which would be very, you'll hear in jazz. Usually, uh, for any kind of old private eye detective movies, minor triad with a major seven, very jazzy. It, when you have tonic as a seventh chord, it's no longer a stable harmonic goal. Five resolves to one. One feels like home base, that's your sense of stability, of resolution. When you make it a seventh chord, it doesn't usually feel like that anymore. It feels, it doesn't function as a one chord. It functions like something that needs to resolve. And that's something to keep in mind. And we'll show how, how it does that. Again, that circle of fist progression is gonna, gonna answer how it, how it would resolve. Lastly, our median seventh chord. That's built on scale degree three. That means that in a major key, it's minor, minor seven in sonority, and in a minor key, it is major, major seven. Three chords typically go to six or to four. So those are the exact options. Same, same deal with the seventh chord. Nothing changes. So how do you typically find these uncommon diatonic seventh chords? You find them in a circle of fifths progression. Let me give you an example. We're in the key of G minor. Four which has a C in the bass, goes down a fifth. Circle of fifths means down, down in fifths. If we were to invert that interval, it would be up in fourths or down in fifths. So down a fifth is functionally the same as up a fourth. So functionally, it's the same thing. So C going to seven, seven. Now, this, uh, and actually, to be totally accurate, it wouldn't be 7-7, seven, seven, it would be 7 major 7. So we have to put that M there. If we do that, that means we're going to an F in the bass. Oh no, I'm sorry, I had it right the, the, the first time. It's a, it, is a, it is a major minor 7. So we want to rewrite that. So 7 means we have an F in the bass. That's down a fifth, C down to F. Now, if instantly, here's something we haven't really talked about before. Seven, in a minor key, with the subtonic scale degree, built on lower seven, so on the natural minor scale. So if we're in the key of G minor, that means normally we would be talking about F sharps to build our seven chord, right? We say F sharp, A, C, E flat. That's our seven chord. But if we don't raise the leading tone, we just make it F, A, C, E flat. Now we're talking about the subtonic chord. We're not talking about leading tone seven, we're talking about subtonic. So that's another new, new chord for us to consider. Circle of fifths, that would then go to a three chord. That would be with a, with a uh, I'm sorry, with a B flat in the bass. Six would be with E flat in the bass, and I'm gonna jump up here. Then we're gonna go to two. In this case, it's an A. This is our first leap that's not a perfect fifth. 
That one is going to be a diminished fifth, but it's still a fifth. So we can still talk about it as a circle of fifth sequence. Then D is a perfect fifth. G is a perfect fifth. So that is a typical that would be the typical root motion. When we have root position seventh chords, we have to alternate between complete seventh chords and incomplete seventh chords. The reason we have to do that is to maintain appropriate voice leading. So, this is the root, third, fifth, seventh of the chord. Seventh has to resolve down. If we look at what the chord, what, what letters we need, we talked about it already. We said it was F, A, C, E flat. F, A, C, E flat. So, the E flat can stay. This G needs to move to something. If we wanted a complete chord, it would move to C. But that's going to be a big leap, and that's going to get in, get in trouble. So instead, we make it an incomplete chord and move it to the F. So this is our complete chord, this is our incomplete chord. That means when we move to our next chord, that will be complete. And we're going to keep alternating between complete and incomplete in order to have smooth voice leading. Three, the notes for that is going to be B flat, D, F, A. The seventh has to move down a step. That's our D. The F is maintained. The A is maintained. We then go to six major seven. The notes for that would be E flat, G, B flat, D. We know that it's going to be incomplete, so we're not going to have a B flat. E flat's here. Maintain common tone. Step down. Step down, doubling the root. Then we go to our two chord, A, C, E flat, G. This one will be complete. The G stays as a common tone. The E flat stays on a common tone. The D here steps down to C. Then we need a 5-7 chord, D, F sharp, A, C. Here we will be raising the leading tone, unlike here. C stays as a common tone. G steps down to F sharp, E flat goes to D, that's an incomplete chord, and then we can make a regular kind of resolution. This has to step down, the seventh resolves down. This is leading tone, it will resolve up. We can keep this as a common tone. We now have a complete chord right there. Now check out what this sounds like. We're in the key of G minor. start here. And that sounds great. It sounds awesome. It's, it has a very jazz flavor to it because these uncommon diatonic seventh chords Although they were used in Western European music long before jazz ever existed, they weren't common. And what jazz did is it started to make them far more common. And the circle of fifths progression for, for all of tonal music is the most powerful progression. And when you make a sequence, you're making it so that you have a pattern. It's not only a harmonic sequence, it's a melodic sequence. So you'll see, it goes... Da, 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 da. It's a pattern. Step down, repeat. Step down, repeat. That's the pattern. Each voice. Step down, repeat. Step down, repeat. Repeat, step down, repeat, step down. Each voice has a melodic pattern. That's part of what makes it a sequence. Sequences are one of my favorite harmonic progressions. They have this sense of inevitability of really forward motion. They, people like Johannes Brahms uses them all the time and they always sound so heroic. So go ahead and experiment with writing all sorts of sequences. Circle of fists sequences are just one kind of sequence you can write. So go forth and enjoy. <laughs>